guys, welcome to episode 20 of the Holy Raw podcast. My name is Maz. Thanks for joining me. Uh, for this episode, we talked to Alex Leet, and you may recognize the name Alex Leet. I like saying the name Alex Leet because uh, I mention him in nearly every episode of the podcast because he actually does the sound, he makes them uh, listenable, presentable. Uh, and all around good episodes Uh, also him and Steve play in the band Human Future you may have heard of them you should have heard them they're really good Uh, they did a split with We Never Learned to Live they also released an album and recorded it with Lewis Johns they've done a lot of touring mostly with uh, a guy that you may or may not know called Kurt Phillips Kurt Phillips used to be the drummer of Parizo uh, and we talk about him in this uh, episode he's a real funny chap yeah we talk about uh, where both Alex and Steve grew up in Tunbridge Wells uh, the kind of music scene Alex also used to be in Never Again as well so we talk a little bit about that and um, yeah it's uh, it's a really good episode so um, hope you enjoy it got some stuff I want to bring you guys up on because obviously in the last two weeks all shit's been going down uh temples have just announced that the melvins are going to be headlining the festival uh temples is in my opinion one of the best uk festivals uh i went last year it was phenomenal um so yeah melvins got confirmed and not only that there's a huge amount of bands that are going to be insane uh all pigs must die die playing it uh weekend nachos are going to be playing one of their last ever uk shows there um primitive man are playing ein reagan oh man uh victims corrupt moral alter acx dc uh mate there's so many good bands so hope you guys get a chance to go there because it is such a good festival. Not only that, but Meet Me in St. Louis kind of got back together, kind of, not really. And uh, was it up to me? Was it based on the podcast I did with Ollie? Uh, yeah, obviously. Uh, you know, he probably thought, yeah, maybe we should get back together for some shows. And then he put it out there and they decided. Obviously, I'm being uh, sarcastic and flippant there, but... Mimi and St. Louis uh, decided to announce that they were going to play a handful of shows this year, uh, this summer in particular. Um, and they announced one show at the Dome in London and another one at uh, the Brudenell in Leeds. I uh, hope I'm saying that right. And um, the Dome show sold out in like three hours. The Dome is massive. You know, so uh, for the first time these guys have played together in eight years, it's a, it's unbelievable. So they added another show, uh, I think the next day. So the next day is the 18th of June, which is Saturday. So if you guys didn't get tickets for Meet Me in St. Louis and you really, really want to go see them, uh, go get tickets. The tickets are available now if you go to Dice FM. Uh, dice.fm you can get tickets from there uh so the second show hasn't sold out yet but i suggest getting tickets as soon as possible also what else oh my god three trap tigers are finally releasing a new album uh you may not know this but three trap tigers are like one of my favorite bands uh uk bands of all time they are just so good they their last album route one is still one of my favorite albums of the last like five or ten years it's so good and they decided to announce that they're releasing a new album so if you go to their facebook page they've actually put up a new track off the new album it's the uh the uh the the album track uh called silent earthling uh and it is just everything i was hoping for and then some you can actually uh pre-order the album uh, uh silent earthling if you go to three trap tigers.com and they're going on tour as well they're going on tour like pretty soon from what i remember they're going on tour in april yeah um so i'm gonna be there i'm gonna go see them at the guildford show because it's free for me but they're playing the scala in london which is amazing um and playing a handful of other shows so unbelievable what else oh my god i went to so i wasn't gonna go to this uh but i ended up going to see glass show at the old blue last um basically uh i saw that it got announced and i was like wow that's really cool um 
and uh, I was thinking about getting tickets. I was like, eh, I don't know, like. I'm not the biggest fan of the old blue last and there was this whole thing about mobile phones like they were going to take your mobile phones when you got to the venue I was like there's no way I'm giving a complete stranger my phone uh, for me to not get it back if you know what I mean so like I was a bit hesitant uh, getting tickets so my mate Pete who actually used to be the bass player of Parizo, he just texted me randomly and said, oh, do you want to go see uh, Glassjaw tonight? I was like, yeah, all right. Um, Glassjaw, probably my favorite band of all time. I'd I'd probably go out and say that, yeah. They, are, they have been just um, probably not consistent in their albums, but everything that they have released, I've enjoyed immensely. And... Um, it it was great to see them in such an intimate venue. Um, it was at the Old Blue Last. It was a 150 cap venue. It was great, man. Like, they did probably about 80% new album material. And uh, they started the set basically playing Worship and Tribute. They opened with Tip Your Bartender. And they played... Um, uh, they played for a handful of worship and tribute songs, basically, but it was great, man. Just seeing them in such an intimate venue was brilliant. So got a lot of stuff to look forward to in the future, man. Uh, so hope to see any of you at any of those shows and uh, say hi, you know. Um, OK, so we're going to get into this podcast. Hope you enjoy it. This is with Alex and Stephen from Human Future slash Truth Seeker. Hope you dig it. And then at the end of the episode, we've got some more announcements. So, peace. Simon <laughs> <laughs> Front, oh, actually, I actually, I haven't heard of Simon Front because I remember they released an album not too long ago. Yeah. And um, I haven't really heard about them since, apart from that they toured France. And I was trying to, I was like, Alex, try and get us on the show with Simon Front. And, uh, I think they've toured France about 28 million times. Like, Simon Front have career. toured constantly and I keep on missing them. Because they always play like places which are too a bit too kind of like it's a bit too convoluted to get to from where I am to be also able to get back home as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they've been a band for nearly ten or twelve years now. They've been a band for a long time and they're good and I enjoy them. Well, there we go. We established that. <laughs> <laughs> so introduce yourselves. Hello, I'm Alex. Uh, I play guitar in Human Future. I run. Truth Seeker. So, yeah, I did say that right way around. Good. Yeah, yeah. That's what I see. Seek Trooper. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm his compadre, Stephen. And um, what do you do? Um, he does a lot. Bits of and bobs. Future. Bits and bobs for human future. And um, I'm also Alex's number two for Truth Seeking Music, boys. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to think of the first time I met you, Alex. Uh, I know the first time I met you was um, at um, Fitzherbert's when uh, Pariso played oh, with um, shit. Yeah, I I We Never Learned to Live thing. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Because that was the first weekend, and because of my uh, eccentric personality, I kind of tried to stay a bit quiet because I realised I could upset people, <laughs> piss people off. And I got puked on by Will that time. Yeah, that's good. Um, that's the story. <laughs> I, no, it probably was at a Pariso show at some stage. Yeah. And that's a place in Brighton, isn't it? Oh, Fitzherbert's. Yeah, I, th- I think that's. Closed or this like changed now? It's like been bought out, but yeah, yeah, it's like a it's like a little tiny forty person capacity venue in uh, Brighton. I like it up. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Yeah, I I what I thought was quite funny when we were performing there was uh, because you have that pillar right in the middle. It feels like you're performing to two different crowds <laughs> at the same time. So I didn't know whether to look at this side a bit more or that side a bit more. Um, I just quite like. You can spread it out there. evenly. That's sorry. like the fish tank at the back. Yeah, no, that's pretty. Sick. I feel sorry for the fish, but like as long as they're up for kind of like noise and sludgy messes, mm. um, I, I bet they're having the time of their life. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what their reactions to loud, heavy <laughs> yeah, music. I don't know are. what aquatic life, you know, yeah. daily life um, considers about. Um, I guess through noise. water, it probably sounds quite pleasant. So. <laughs> yeah, it's quite soothing. It's kind of like ASMR, sort of relaxing tones. It's like yeah, falling asleep. It's like I'm gonna drown. Did we play any other? Shows apart from that together? I think... Because um, we... Oh, yeah. So that weekend, we played with you in Brighton and then we went on... Uh, it was us. We never learned to live. We did like three days together. We did the first day with you and then the following two days with Svalbard. Right, right. Okay. Because I feel like 
we we probably played a lot of shows together, but I, my memory's just not that good. I don't with... think we actually did play that many shows together. But I think no. we could have been just the one, maybe. It might uh, have been. There's a couple. But, um, yeah, because we played, um, that's where essentially where the uh, split record was established, because I was a bit kind of like, oh, yeah, sorry. I'm an R because I'm very particular. Human future means it's a very specific a bunch of things to me. Right. And that's and, um, the we never learned to live. Split, yeah. Split. Yeah. We did that weekend with them and we. I fell in love with them and that's when I was just like, I'm, I'm down for it, guys. You guys liked it. I'm up for it now. Let's yeah. go. I think, um, I can't remember if they recorded their side of it before and we did it afterwards, but they were like within a month. And initially, we both both bands had planned to uh, release them like just as solo EPs or videos or whatever. And um, we went on that weekend and we we're like, we're doing it live. We're doing it live as well. We're doing it live. <laughs> Brilliant. Shall we? Uh... So <laughs> combine the two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one um, plus one that equals split. Yeah. So um, just just go back. So so you're kind of Kent. But is that where you're from? Uh, Are you both from that area? Yes, I, I was born and bred in Tunbridge. Yeah. And you're Cranbrook boy, aren't you? I, I was oh, no, you're Welsh. Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> Going back a long way, I'm Welsh. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, we're predominantly from uh, like Tunbridge, Tunbridge Wells area. Right, right. Um, our singer Will used to live just outside of Tunbridge Wells, but got a dream job and now lives in uh, Birmingham. So oh, wow. we're, we're pretty well spread. Yeah. It's nice. Okay. Um, does that does that make it harder to? Yeah, uh, that could be a large part as to why we're so unproductive. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, he lives he lives miles away, so we tend to mm. practice without him, and then just get him for the vital practices or yeah, whatever. But so, you, oh, sorry, go on. No, no, go on. Well, we simply put, like not to disparage Will at all, like it's not that important for him to be there half the time because right. So far, the way Human Futures functioned is it's pretty much written and it's like learn the parts and yeah. um, now that we kind of uh, with the next stuff we're working on it's become far more collaborative mm. um, it's important for the members to be like the band members uh, like musicians as such to be there as in people playing the instruments but um, the vocals haven't like all the lyrics haven't been compiled yet and um, it's kind of like we're going to fit the lyrics around the music Yeah. so him being there all the time isn't like necessary off, uh, yeah, yeah. like obviously it would be good for him to be able to kind of like constantly work through ideas but time doesn't allow it distance doesn't allow it so got to be realistic yeah I, I was very much like that with the start Parisa where I was like I have to be there every practice because I want to contribute to the ideas and talk about themes and stuff it's also just this, the, the the atmosphere of the group the, the camaraderie of mm. actually it's kind of like a Everyone in a, who actually has been in a band long enough to know realise it is another type of relationship. It's a different type of relationship. It's like you've got, f we've got five girlfriends or partners or whatever you want to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But by the end, of, I remember by the end of uh, Pre's, I was like, I don't have to be. Do I even have to go? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we've got shit. one practice before the show. It's like I know the words. So yeah. I'll just meet you there. It does get that way, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's because like, how long have you guys been a band? Far um, too long, and again, it's <laughs> like again, like to, to give you the history. Alex and I set up the band. We set it up with a guy called Rob McBride, who's one of our oldest friends. He's he was bassy boy, and um, simply put, I he took was control. Not for it. I mm. took control. I started writing like uh, writing the majority of the ideas and taking ideas that Alex had in kind of arranging the pieces. Alex wrote the lyrics to arguably the best song, um, Missionary, and um, again, like that sort of stuff. And I just kind of took control and directed it and so that was about five years ago wasn't yeah it? and basically oh, rob right. couldn't play the bass lines i was writing and also he had uni and he's just like I'm, i can't be bothered like, yeah, yeah. This. i've got i've got more important shit to do yeah so it went like that and um i wanted to keep it a bedroom band and mm. alex convinced me that like no nah, actually let's, let's take it to the stage at, at the start i because i used to be uh in a band before that and i was kind of got fed up of um playing live so I, I think when we started it Steve was like I want to just have it in my bedroom ne like never play it outside of there and I was like absolutely fine with that <laughs> <laughs> I have zero interest in touring I, before we'd done the band I'd sold my guitar and I'd sold like all my amps and everything I was like not playing never doing this again yeah, fuck this shit and uh, yeah we went out with um, our friend Rob who's like a mutual friend like me and Steve I, we We'd known of each other for a long time. We'd sort of chatted on MSN. In yeah, like I remember the years ago. I fucking hated you on MSN for a like for a period. It was completely immature because it was just like Alex's. Uh, if you 
come to spend your time with Alex, you'll realise that he likes taking the piss. Oh, a little. And he was just like doing it to me. And this was before I was humbled at all. I'm like, I'm, shall we say, I'm likely to be highly functioning autistic. <laughs> and I just took it incredibly like seriously. Yeah, it's like, yeah. you're fucking annoying, fuck this. <laughs> like, just, just slating Opeth. <laughs> Probably was what it was, and he's like, "No, no, open the brilliant. How no, dare you? They're the best band. You're wrong. You're <laughs> I wrong." I was like, "Mate, come on, Drowning Pool are much better." Than <laughs> Have you even seen the cover arts are desensitised? <laughs> Perfect. And the adjusted cover soon <laughs> after. <laughs> yeah, and clearly we had a clash of um, yeah, ideals. Right, right. No, yeah. So, so, so anyway, yeah, we um, we kind of known each other for a long time. We went to go, um, let's see Tisha Amore. I think it was on their first UK tour. Okay, and uh, like went as a as a three me Steve and Rob and that was like the first time we properly met and we were like we should start a band I, well no I'd met you before but again it was also it was always a bit of a case of like, like we spent that time around Rob's house or whatever Christmas or New Year's or something like that and again it was just like a bit like it was a bit cheapish because we hadn't really spent time together as like like, hey, how are you doing? So, um, how's that weather? And like actually talking to each other beyond <laughs> internet connections right, right and um yeah, we went to the gig and it wasn't it Rob who actually was like, yeah, yeah, like kind of almost jokingly was like, yeah, yeah, you should start a band, you should start a band. Yeah. And then like, we kind of like, all right. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, like, I, I remember the way I viewed it was, um, I was in, I've been in so many silly little bands like that were bedroom bands because again, I'm, I, it's interesting. Alex comes from a lot more from hardcore, like metal as well, like obviously Man of War and all your business. <laughs> I've seen Man of War. You having a go? I'm not, I'm not having a go. <laughs> okay, about Opeth and your. <laughs> Yeah, like about man of war. Like, 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 I, I came from a far more pretentious kind of thing, whereas Alex came from a bit more of like a kiss and uh, man of war and like just kind of yeah, fucking loving the music, loving the live thing. Yeah, I was yeah. always into very kind of. I was brought up essentially on Pink Floyd, so Earth, Wind and Fire, Osabisa, and all these bands where it's very. I want to meet this younger Alex Lee. <laughs> I want to meet where this. Was, where was he? I was thinking about this the other day about the absolutely awful bands I was into for a long time. What would you? I can only imagine, like you had kind of long flowing hair and like. A, oh, I a, wish I had a, my driving license picture. Grebo hoodie and he was a bit like a grunger. Yeah. Oh, see, we'd be best mates. As yeah. Well. Be. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of deleting on Facebook in in recent years. <laughs> Just going through. Get rid of that. Oh God. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. I I actually had hair at one point yeah. as well. So like yeah. No. So anyway, so we started the band. Uh, Rob, well, no, 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 again, Rob, like, didn't yeah, wanna, so, Rob didn't really want to do it. So yeah, it was a case got, of I came from stuff where it was like far more ornate and uh, kind of considered and stuff, and I could see like the crossover between bands like post hardcore bands and so on, and right. bands like Isis, Neurosis, um, Cult of Luna, all those bands. I was just like, I was in bands where it was essentially a case of like credibility. Well, no, <laughs> it was, it, essentially, it was always a case of there was someone else in charge, and I was like, okay, like you've got a vision, you want to get see it through, and they can't follow it, follow it through, and they mm. couldn't do it, follow it through. And I was just like, I can fucking do this. So I wanted to try and do it, and I saw it essentially as an opportunity to do something with friends, right. where it was like, let's kind of do something a bit more immediate, something that would actually come about. Because I knew Alex was a motivated guy, mm. and boy, is he motivated. Yeah. And yeah, That's it's, the- it's, it's, it. The fact that we actually got anything out, essentially, like, is down to Alex. Like, right. that, the com- composition and stuff, I love doing that. And, like, it pretty much early on, I just kind of badgered, beavered away on that. And it was Alex who kind of motivated me to actually get stuff finished and also then, like, get it out there. And, again, like, take it from, you do realise, like, you know, we could, like, this is actually good enough to take live and stuff. I'm like, no, 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 like... Zaster didn't go live sort of stuff and it's just like it's not Zaster mate like, seems like a lot of you are really reluctant to even play a sh- one show <laughs> we were yeah I think it was a miracle what was that first show like then we it's played in Tunbridge Wells it show was, us your guns it was, it was, it was sort of advertised as it's not a battle of the bands but, <laughs> but really, it is but they're going to compete <laughs> really yeah I think almost like a was, battle and the thing was, um, <laughs> if you the band that had the most friends come along or like got the most people to go, uh, would, tickets. would therefore Headline. then be uh, thought of kindly so they could be asked to play with larger bands in the future. Right, right. I remember those promos. So that was basically the first show. The second Burgundy, show... But Burgundy, The Triangle and City of Ashes. There you go. Fuck yeah, our first, our first three shows were all a little bit 
cringy. Oh, I'm not fucking. It's the second one in Dartford Hate Club. Jesus Christ. That was full of hate. It was so hateful. It was the most hateful gig ever. Where, yeah. Where's Dartford? <laughs> um, it's where, do you know Dartford Crossing? When you're on the M25, right. you get over from um, Kent into Essex. It's like okay. over a bridge to get. Right, to right. When you're on the, yeah. And what was that like? Uh, that was horrendous. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we played our first three shows in within like about, it was within a month and they're all like pretty, pretty dire. Yeah, yeah. The second show definitely I felt better. It was again, it was a, one of these things where you're playing to like five people and the bands. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And um, someone who I was, we were completely unaware of, we didn't know. So it's one of these things where it's like a complete stranger came up and said, oh, I really like it. I can hear the ISIS and the new mm. ISIS. It's like, it's kind of influenced but like that you kind of reference them. it's kind of it's one of those things where it's not like just like you were really good with that um, song yeah but, I like the guitar co- bit yeah it's yeah, like yeah. someone who sincerely seems to get it or not I say get it because well they get the references and also also just enjoyed it and it's nice that when like, again it's one of these things where like if you're very insular and so on mm-hmm. it's just it's kind of you never think of it in terms of whether other people will like it and then someone else comes up um, and he's like saying, yeah, yeah, cool, that's wicked. He's just like, oh, shit, yeah, nice. That's really, that's very, com- not comforting, um, makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we we just done a, a demo, which we'd recorded at home at that time. So that was basically me, Steve, Will, the vocalist, was um, doing vocals. Originally, he was playing guitar until he realised he couldn't play guitar. Yeah. <laughs> um, what am I doing? <laughs> and then uh, this guy, Ricky, was on bass for the demo and then when we went to play live Ricky was the guy in the band that led to me going I'm fucking sick of this band I want to. and then he's like can I play bass sort of thing he's like I, I, I kind of want to do something so yeah, it's yeah. like and it, got, it was the point where basically he couldn't achieve his ideals and then realised like oh yeah I can play some bass it's like yeah fuck it like you're my mate Why yeah, yeah. Out? so yeah that those first three shows we just had a demo and then we went and recorded our first EP with uh Lewis L. Jones, along with everyone else, everyone UK. else that I've ever talked to in my entire <laughs> life. Um, yeah, how was that with him? Incredible. Mm. Yeah, um, I think Phil, who uh, plays guitar, uh, sort of, I think he'd seen it on online or something like that. I think they just had the new live room had been developed, mm. and I was like, Jesus, this place looks incredible. And then we're looking through his list of who he's worked with, like. He's worked with some really great bands. For me, so, I remember seeing Bastions mentioned. I was like, okay, that's the one. Like, mm. This is the guy I kind of I'm interested in. So, because um, we're also looking at Jamie, what was his name? Uh, Jamie Fry. We were looking I, at. So, uh, you, cause oh I, yeah, because I've recorded them when I was in uh, Never Again, and then um, yeah, because he's he's from he's, that area, isn't yeah, he? He's from Margate. So, mm. um, and yeah, we're looking through the list of bands he worked with. Like, wow, he's worked with these really big bands. Yeah, yeah. So for us at the time, we're just. Working on demos um, seemed like really huge bands. Well, it's also the thing was before, like, like just to make it clear, before the like the um, our debut EP was uh, done and written or whatever, and before Phil and Luke were in the band, I'd already already written Spectrum, and it was a case of that's essentially where it was where Alex was like, "Come on, let's actually make a band," sort of thing. Right. And so anachronism, very simply put, was a te- uh, attempt to like get involvement from Phil and Luke and stuff like that mm. and um, so it was also because Alex Fitzpatrick was like saying essentially chill out like no one knows who you are like, yeah, yeah, just going straight and just it. doing the album like you're just it's gonna so in hindsight are you glad that you did an EP before you did an album yes because again it was an immediate way to get Phil and Luke involved um, presented its own sort of tensions because again like it's a long story I had a very particular idea of things and tried to convey what I was meaning to those guys and caused tension because I was like, I was writing five albums ahead and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, Calm down, mate. So like, this is what I've been telling you. She's like, yeah. There was a stage when uh, Steve would be like, so this is for the, uh, putting this song to the third album. Like, we're not on the first one yet. <laughs> it takes us a year. Yeah, this is like, again, it's not, this isn't a boast or anything. This is literally some matter of fact thing. I have lots of ideas and I just don't necessarily have the motivation or energy to actually do them all on my own. So I was kind of just like preparing it all and getting all like all the concepts and themes. And yeah, the rest of the band were obviously getting a bit like chilling the fuck out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pissing us off. I was like, oh, I told you this was what was going to happen. And obviously that's not happening. Yeah. Um, anachronism was a very good point to kind of, yeah, just 
become a I, become I'd, a band. Well, no, and also like I'd never been in the studio before. I don't know about you. Yeah, I've been. In the so yeah, I was fucking terrified. And, really? Um, yeah, no, I was just like again, like, um, never been in there before. So I was just like, oh my god, like, um, are we going to get it all done in time? I'm, I'm just cons- trying to because as band leader, essentially, like, I'm just like, do I do this? Do I do that? Do I? Yeah, do yeah, much? yeah. And um, it was a it was a very eye opening experience of like Lewis knows what the fuck he's doing, and um, we got introduced to Lewis, and we were like all like Lewis is a fucking dude sort of thing. And uh, we we like that. I shoot. I'm pretty sure we kind of all agree that after recording anachronism, we're like that's where we're recording in the spectrum. Mm-hmm. No yeah. question. So were you finding? Because uh, I I can't really relate to that because I'm not really like a band. I've never been a band lead. I've just been contributing in my own way. So I've never felt any particular pressure getting into a studio as long as like my voice is fine. I'm normally good. But so going into that, were you just like yeah like. Are we going to get it done in time? Like, how is it going to work? And yeah, it's very. It was pretty much concern of like how many days were you there for? For three days, okay. and it was a, that yeah. thing of like, is that enough time? Mm. It was only two tracks, but it was like, I, I again, it's just the sheer ignorance of the process. So you're just like, fuck, uh, like, it, like, am I actually going to be able to perform the drums in? Like, get them all done in time? Are we going to be able to do this? Are we going to be able to do that? Is it going to then be actually a state where it's already? Yeah. Just all the concerns and it was very much just as I've already stated eye opening to realise that like as long as you know what you're doing you mm. know your parts and so on um, you're done yeah like, yeah I remember there's a period where like I, I, I pissed off um, all of the band because they're, <laughs> the bassist um, like played this particular bass line which he didn't do on the demo and I'm like because I've been obsessing over stuff on right, like, right. like getting sure like it's all correct and stuff like that it's like that's not what you fucking did on the demo I was like yeah. that sounds horrible yeah. to me and basically I had to kind of like kind of yeah be just, like just let him go leave it be like everyone's fine with it it's not like, everyone's like, like to me I'm like saying it, it went on for horrible. hours and then the next day you're like which was it on again <laughs> song, <laughs> song. it was 20 minutes maximum yeah but again obviously that causes some tension and it's one of those things where I have to realise that whilst but, I've established certain things and mm. I've kind of told people this sort of stuff if I want to be in a band I do have to like allow people some expression and yeah stuff. yeah and yeah. it was really it really was a thing where like to this day I don't notice like mm. the thing. It sounds fine by me. It was just in the instance again. I imagine to an extent, just kind of um, being caught off guard. It was just like, right, and right. with the, the panic of like, are oh, we going to get things done in time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, it being, just kind of built up. Yeah, and I was just being unreasonable. Mm. Simple as that. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of want to go back to why you were reluctant to play live. Sh- was that through Never Again that you didn't want to play any shows anymore? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, looking back, I wasn't. Never again, because it was only around for like a year and a half. Mm. And I kind of started the band along with Pat and Tom in like January. And right. I quit by November, so I wasn't even there for a year. And we were only playing shows from about May onwards. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it was not even that long. But um, I was I was the only person that could drive. Oh, no. And I lived... Uh, Luke lived further away than me, I suppose. But it was like... We, we didn't do tours at that time, so it was like, we'd just do one-off shows. And it'd be like, uh, so we're playing in Blackburn tonight, um, driving up from Kent, got to go and pick everyone up on the way, oh go <laughs> all around the houses, and then uh, go up to Blackburn, play to you know, a decent-sized crowd, it was, sure. it was good, and then having to drive back, drop everyone off, and then go home, and then go to work in the morning, or go to college in the morning. It was like, it, in hindsight, if we'd done a tour... It would be absolutely fine, but because they were just one-off shows, it, yeah. was, it was a nightmare. Oh, I know. Our, our old drummer, Alistair, and Kurt to an extent as well, they were always the drivers, so mm. they'd have to pick everyone up. And Alistair especially was in Parise when we were doing all the one-offs. So I remember our, we played a show in Milton Keynes with Bastions for the first Milton time. Milton Keynes. <laughs> in the ski lodge or whatever it was. And me, me and Alistair uh, left at like maybe two in the afternoon went to London, picked everyone up from their houses, drove up to Milton Keynes, played to like 12 people, came back. Big crowd for Milton Keynes. Yeah. (laughs) Genuinely. (laughs) Uh, Dropped everyone else off uh, and everyone was drunk apart from him, obviously. So he probably (laughs) loved that and dropped everyone else off, drove back home because he lives in uh, Paul, which is two hours away from me. So he dropped me off. Two hours later, he's back home at like maybe four or five in the morning and then he's got to go to work. And, he, and that was his career in Parizo. He hated it. 
What Crawford Arms, our <laughs> show, we played a show with that Mine was, and uh, Rough Hand, wasn't it? Yeah, that was our record games. release show for Anachronism. And we're, like, we're so excited because that was our first like proper show with you know bands that we were kind of fans of. Yeah. And we're looking at the line like, wow, Rough Hands, Mine. It was on Halloween. Yeah. Like, Shit, it's going to be our record release show. It's going to be massive. It's going to be like, the place is going to be jumping. Yeah. Uh, we took the bands. We had two people. There were legitimately two people there. It was wow. the busiest that got all night. Oh, my God. Played for the other bands and then left. And it- <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> well, no, no, like, like, I, it wasn't like fuck this. It was still good fun, but it was just like, it was deflating for sure because, like, mm. record release. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. No one gives a shit. Yeah, it didn't no sell one a single one. Us. <laughs> yeah. And, um, uh, it was, it's just a long drive to Milton Keynes, which, like, like, I've been to worse places, but it's a bit bland. So it was just a, it was deflating. I, I think it definitely there. humbles you when you, you do a lot of those kind of shows, especially when you're early on in a career of a band where you have to do those like one offs and you're playing to literally no one. Um, like when we did, a, we did a tour with Throats and Crocus and we, we played a show in London and we only performed to the other band members and it's like, this is really but it's, it's still lovely because like it's, you're playing music you love and stuff like that yeah, and it's, and it's, it's a, like a glorified band practice of yeah sorts. and you hang out with your, your friends and yes you, you know. but it's still it's just like yeah, you, there's obviously you want people to it's not necessarily even like you want to be world famous necessarily it's just you mm. would like people to hear your music yeah 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 and so it is a bit like oh, oh well yeah mm. so it. so going back to like so when you guys were kind of growing up in that area did you, what was the kind of scene like for like local bands and stuff. Uh, Tumish Wells Forum is yeah, like kind of forum. That's it was always like a lot of bands playing there. I saw Raging Speedhorn play there. It was pretty <laughs> sick. <laughs> Were you there at the time when like yeah. someone got yeah so, on the big legal thing where some dude like got his got mashed up a bit and then was like surprised that he got injured and they decided to sue the forum or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So there was there was always like a steady supply of bands like that. Uh, Amen played there a bunch. Mm. Um, so yeah, like I went to see Sick there when then they yeah, released um, the trees. Like, I can't, I've, I've forgotten what, yeah. that like, first album. Yeah, the first album. It was mm. before just well, uh, like around the time that they were releasing that or whatever. And oh, that was a wicked show. So that was, I think the forum was kind of the the place to go for even if there wasn't bands playing. It was like mm. the place to hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, all the kids around there and Calvary and stuff like that, just getting pissed up and doing all sorts of drugs. <laughs> was, there, was there other venues like around there that were kind of hot spots? I can't for... think of a single no, one. No, I cannot think, think. Yeah, it's literally, it would be Tumble Drills Forum and the bands I wanted to see, like Opeth and stuff, you'd have to go to London. Mm. And um, yeah, or we get a bus down to Brighton. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, no, but, but yeah, at that, that point I wasn't really aware of that, so I can't question the comment on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was also like there's, there is stuff that, for music in mm. Tumbridge Wells, and it's more it's just a bit more I guess um, jazz and um, singer songwriter sort of stuff. Right, right. Where, which is it's just a bit more appealing to people and um, like heavy music kind of comes around once in a blue moon sort of thing. Mm. You get some interesting bands there and um, sort of Boningen there and Slaves come from like Tumbridge, where my town, or, or like a, at least around that area. Oh, really, you're forgetting Keen as well. Keen, yeah, they're from Tumbridge. Looks wow. like one of my old music teachers as well. She. Uh, we don't like that, like because uh, <laughs> she's a woman. <laughs> but um, so the not incredible, but mm. all right. Yeah, I, suppose, I think that's just like a, a home counties thing. Like uh, I we think, got castles, mate. We don't need music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's not prevalent for like those kind of bands to just crop up. Really, like I found that when I was younger in this area, like. When I was a kid, we had like Reuben and Hundred Reasons, oh, and they're all from Ruben, this area. Yes, boy. Yeah, so that was like the uh, the catalyst for a lot of other bands. But apart from that, it was very few and far between. I'd have to go to London. And the stuff first like gig that. I actually went to in the forum because there was lo- lots of people like pop punk and like in the and stuff like that. I went to a ska night there, and it was all kind of like un- like underground ska bands, and it was that was generally really good. But yeah. again, it's a, a lot of the times there's. One band I can think of, a local band, who are actually genuinely really, really good, but they're alternative rock, kind of radiohead type band called Lectures. Yeah. And um, they're worth a shit, mm. but the bands that they have to play with, to a large extent, there's some good bands, like the Island Cassettes or something like that. That's one band I enjoyed. But the yeah. rest of the time, it is genuinely like Arctic Monkeys, kind right, of like right. rip-offs. And so, like, literally some shows that I've been there, like, watching them support and open for Lectures, it's a case of like... Uh, we've forgotten how to play this song we'll move on to the next one sort of thing it's just completely um, 
uninitiated mm. and um, just <laughs> completely under practiced and stuff like that. So it's just like it's not much sheen to things, and there's not much kind of unique stuff right. going on. But as I say, it lectures there. Right? Yeah. So it was more a case of there would be bands coming in and out of Tunbridge River, but there yeah, was like yeah. a. If you wanted scene. to see a good band, you would have to essentially wait for yeah, wait a band to come along. Mm. And yeah, if you were otherwise, Brighton, London. Yeah. yeah. But then, because uh, like obviously you, like when you're in Never Again, I was talking to Tom about that kind of that Kent hardcore scene. Like, were you at all a part of that? Um, for me, I was definitely kind of on the outside of that because right. I, to be, to be honest, I was not massively into hardcore. I was like liked Comeback Kid and mm, uh, Minor Threat voice. and a few, yeah, yeah. And a, a few kind of. A couple of hardcore bands, but I wasn't really into it. And then um, I was friends with uh, Pat Hassan from uh, went to the same secondary school, and um, I went to go and see his band play, and they didn't have a bassist. So I was like, "I'll play bass for you." He's mm. like, "Okay, but you have to listen to these bands." He gave me a ginormous <laughs> bag. Of, yeah. yeah, gave me a bag of CDs, like yeah. thirty records, and um, so I I got into it, to sort of being. To someone who could play bass. To, yeah, to play bass in this other band. Mm. And um, we played some some decent shows. We played with like Ruiner and Anchor and a couple of other right. good bands. But they, like the rest of the band, uh, both stand fast, actually. Probably doesn't want me to say the name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can find it online anymore. <laughs> um, no, and uh, never again. They were, um, all the other members were like really kind of, close in the um the srh scene and stuff like that I was, yeah i was not at all really no no so you were kind of like outside of that yeah um, i was really into slayer and, and converge so i had some credibility but then mm. that was sort of they were like my favorite bands but then the majority of my bands were like soulfly and yeah, yeah. <laughs> i guess like the soulfly are kind of like legit and like you can you, like know. they're not my cup of tea but like you, you can't really argue with the legacy like those sorts of sepulture and soulfly yeah. but like that was just year year nine or eight for me was all that new metal yeah i hung on to that for a long time mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think for me when i was uh when i was in years eight or nine i think uh, it was that kind of thing where it's like nirvana green day then you move on to other bands outside of that and only when i got into sixth form i was listening to like post hardcore i guess or like hardcore i was in a band with uh with will who's our singer and i remember going to see slayer um at, in brixton and um i was kind of in the queue i was on my own because i skyped off school to go and make sure i get down the front mm, and sort of show would. how show how into slayer i was by being on the barrier <laughs> and, uh, and um this guy i was stood next to in the queue i was like oh my, my friend will's coming in a bit um we, i've we, reserved him this yeah we're gonna let him in the queue on the barrier and we got chatting and i was like oh, yeah he's a singer in my band he's like, oh what sort of band are you in yeah uh i remember the description i gave him <laughs> i remember the description i gave him my band to this guy this is like one of my, my early bands it's like it sounds kind of like um <laughs> can't even say it say it <laughs> it sounds like Iron Maiden mixed with Seether. <laughs> <laughs> and what did he say then? He said, I'm not going to lie, mate, it sounds fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he's absolutely on the nail. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's definitely nailed it with that description. <laughs> not something I'd go out to find, to be honest. What? Yes. Yeah. Seether <laughs> was the pinnacle of musical innovation. Yeah. That kind of like th that little step above stained. Wow. <laughs> So there you go, zero okay. credibility. So yeah. you're because like, again, you like you you are actually you started musically kind of like jamming bands and stuff like that. Did I? <laughs> right, yeah, like you were like you had bands with Will and stuff. Oh right, right, yeah, yeah, sure. Whereas right. again, like I started. Have you heard of Power Tab? Of what? Power have you tab? heard of Power Tab? It's like, like guitar a pro sort of stuff. Okay, it's, it's like a tabbing website. Okay, yeah, a bit. Of I. I started writing music on Power Tab, wow. and I was on my own pretty much like reclusive teenage years of like writing music, learn, teaching myself to write music by ripping off Opeth, Agaloc, Enslaved, Metallica, horribly. Kills Christian Gage too as well. Like one album, one yeah. album only. The the one the end of heartache. No 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 no. I can't remember what it's called now. Before that, but oh, alive or just breathing. Yeah, the one with Jesse right. James Leach or whatever. Right right right. And um, that I was, oh, yeah. And I just wrote horrible things, 
formulating music yeah. and kind of got to a point where I kind of felt like... I that's write songs. that's how autistic you are. You just stayed in your room at pa- uh, using Power Tab rather than actually being in a band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've written like... Now, bearing in mind, that would be easier and quicker than actually being in a band, like mm, writing music. To an extent, we, yeah. You have to understand how to actually fucking write it first like because it is like you have to learn the process of using it. Mm. And once I learned it, kind of like... yeah. Oof, yeah ugh. The stuff when I was learning to use it. Like, I was like, <laughs> I'm doing a Metallica type epic and then like it's going to be uh, some influences from Sixth and Dillinger and like, all this stuff like that. And you just listen to it and it's basically, it's a fucking mess. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, is it as much of a mess as I made in the Seether? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, definitely on the level. But um, yeah, no, it came to a point where I actually started actually being able to use the stuff. So yeah, it becomes when, when you learn, understand it and you actually have an idea of, oh, okay, this is going to be terrible and like, you develop your voice, mm. it starts becoming piece of piss. Wrote at le- I've written at least 50 albums on Power Tab. No doubt 40 of them, a minimum, were total shit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Like, like, some of them were kind of like, like my, the best stuff I ever wrote was kind of, in a way, started formulating ideas for human future. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's the legacy that Power Tab has for me. What was that shirt you wanted to have for Human Future? No, Down used to have a t-shirt that Because I, I wrote the demo and Spectrum on Power Tab and that's how they were learned. And so like everyone in the band, like kind of joined in the band afterwards was like, fucking hell, like, <laughs> fucking hell. So essentially just like, got all this written down. And so... So yeah, Down used to have a t-shirt that said... Uh the power of the riff compels you and I wanted to have one that said the power of the tab compels you <laughs> <laughs> do you want to turn that out for us <laughs> yeah. I'll do it for sure we'll that whilst we're doing the show just whip it yeah, out yeah yeah I'll whip them out yeah <laughs> um, I guess we should probably talk about True Seeker no let's no. talk about uh, Murder Dogs okay cool um, <laughs> so no True Seeker so when did you start the label um, Alex Fitzpatrick I was I was helping out with Holy Raw for a bit and I was um Oh, before we get into this, sorry, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt, but I wanted to hear more about Justine was telling me about you and her going to Gross Rock. <laughs> yeah. And broke was, it, was it Gross Rock or it was when... <laughs> he, he, Alex didn't break edge, I'm taking the piss. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, or um, basic, maybe it was heavy where you had to go get, um, yeah. like there was a bad weather and yeah. stuff. What, what happened there? Driving there, I've never seen, it was like the entire planet had gone black <laughs> and I got there and as I was driving through the roads just all the roads were suddenly flooded and sort of half an hour before you know absolutely lovely and clear yeah, driving yeah. along and it was just absolutely every road was completely flooded it was crazy so pulled up like let's just put up this gazebo that had been provided by uh, uh, Fitz and I think some of the other pink miss people sort right. of have together and uh, so he set it up and all the other gazebos alongside ours were very, um, they're pretty good. Mm. Um, like professional <laughs> <I'll come> gazebos. <laughs> How you all one was, no. um, it was like That's a 20 quid design. one from being q or something. It was absolutely terrible. So he set it up. I think I still got some videos I can show you. Right. <laughs> and that would work great. Yeah, it would be good on an audio podcast. We'll just give it as a little supplement along with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah let, oh, let's make this new year of podcast be video podcast little company. yeah yeah um, so <laughs> we managed to eventually get everything set up and we didn't have some pegs we had to like tie some ropes down we're like shit let's just hide in the van for a minute which is when we text Fitz to say like look at the planet ending right now around <laughs> us and um, it sort of died down a little bit we went inside and just the entirety of the, all the tables we'd set up no kind of records or anything on there mm. we set up a bunch of stuff and um it's <laughs> just absolutely drenched like this is not gonna work so yeah me and justine drove off to b and q and home base and just got tarpaul and all these other little supplies mm. and um we spent about an hour and a half getting all these things we got back like hey guys we, you know we're gonna save the day with all these things and they're like yeah we're just gonna bin it <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay oh no so at that point we're like do we even bother and then we just decided we we're gonna do it out of the back of the van. Yeah, yeah. It's like, let's just be punk. I'll yeah. I saw the pictures of it. It looked great. It doesn't it make me think punk. It makes me think more old. Like, Can't like, old horses. Yeah. Sort of like, like, it's shit. punk, all right? Yeah. It's punk. If we say it's punk, it's punk. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's punk, right? That's the rules of punk. <laughs> um, drove home that night, went back the next day, and it was actually a really nice day. Yeah. And, like, they just kept the roof of the busy and left the sides off. And 
or was sunburned. that like as well because i was asking justine like what the i guess the bridge for holy raw bands and grows Rock. like did you see a lot of people coming and like interacting with the stool and stuff like that or was um, it too like departed from that kind of scene i think i don't know there were a couple of people that sort of come along that were like oh holy raw's here like yeah. you saw him as they walk past so that was cool and then there would be <laughs> Like you sort of see someone walking in a more than life show, you're like, oh, yeah, 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 you know, eleven o'clock, watching, <laughs> and just watch him go straight past and go to some like, yeah, other table. Like, okay, <laughs> that's my favourite thing about <laughs> behind a merch desk when you're just sat there and someone will just come along, kind of, peruse, yeah, peruse just out of politeness because they don't really want to look, but they having a look at the CD and they always have that reaction when they look at the back, go, hmm. <laughs> put it back down. Just oh, leave, yeah. and oh. then oh, this is something I'd oh, never buy. Yeah, this is fine. <laughs> terrible. Um, and you went to temples as well, weren't you? We went to temples. Yeah, we, um, Sonan took us up for um, for True Seeker to go to, to go to temples, and that was incredible. oh brilliant. Um, yeah, they just sort of they got us in to do their merch, and then the way it worked out, we just ended up seeing a large number of bands. <laughs> I got to see Portal. Yes. Fuck yes! Portal. I listened to, uh, after listening to the uh, the High Your podcast the other week. I listened to Portal, 
And Alex's description of them being like, he said, said something like, sounds like they don't have any threats. So it just sounds like some sort of evil wind. <laughs> I listened to it. Absolutely the best description I've yeah. ever heard. <laughs> the evil wind one, it, I, first of all, I didn't really understand where it was coming from. But Listen I, to Portal. Yeah. <laughs> You'll understand. Because I, I text Steve, I was like, I listen to Portal. Do you reckon they're like writing songs? And he's like, no, I think the, the next part should go more like... <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's incomprehensible, and that's part of the appeal of it. But obviously, that's also part of the thing that makes people fucking hate it because it sounds like yeah, a I'm fucking mess. It the the get up obviously adds to it, but it's just like a love, love crafty and sort of mess. Yeah, they've just it's, added all these combinations to make it as prevalent as it is. It just sound. I'm into stuff like Scott Walker, so genuine like heavy dissonance and jarring songwriting. Right. Because again, like I'm so into writing stuff that's minimalist and that kind of goes in a specific direction and mm. is very kind of coherent. So this stuff kind of is a sensory assault of sorts. Right. So um, when you listen to Portal, it's just like, it is just like the sound of witnessing Cthulhu taking a shit on you. Sort of <laughs> like, it's just like, oh, hell, what's that? Oh, he's shitting on me. Jesus. <laughs> or Dagon, like kind of like playing poker with like, I don't know. Like, what, um, out of those festivals then, do you think kind of catered most to probably like... Roburn. Robot. <laughs> so, like, Seriously, most of all, so like the holy raw like um, kind oh, of scene. Uh, Roburn. <laughs> well, Roburn. Like I imagine, oh, I imagine because like stuff like Slab Draco and Ohms like is kind of Roburn material. Mm. Uh, I would say the ones that we went to last year, um, probably Heavy Fest should have been, but wasn't. Yeah, which I guess it's a bit odd. Mentioned. Mm. Um, I don't know. I think each festival had like it's winning points so like Gross Rock had the best vegan food mm. it was just incredible and like the, the setup for the merchandise area and like being generally clean was incredible mm. Temples Fest just You're best just bands there. for me yeah <laughs> um, Heavy Fest best rain <laughs> I don't know best, best rain, rain. <laughs> <laughs> my favourite the rain the zoo's pretty cool like, to, like didn't go well they moved now they're not near the they're going to Derby now aren't they yeah. next year which is odd. I'm not N- sure why. They, they're playing the zoo again. No, no, no. It's, What's the point? They moved to the yeah. <laughs> Mammoth Fest is what an interesting looking festival. So Brighton one down at the Green oh, Door yeah, store. Yeah. Like, um, I, I imagine. Yeah, I was going to say. I imagine you're aware of uh, Conjurer. Mm. Mm. Very, very good. And um, RSJ played and oh god, I can't. I can't remember. Basically, I, oh, I was, was a past. Yeah, that is. I, was, I can't remember the other bands. Basically, I I, I cream over Conjurer because they're. They're really good. Right. I saw them. Um, I heard the demos because um, uh, Brady, uh, when we were at Temples, came up to us and was like, "Oh, you got are you the guys who put out Sonance? Yeah, I'm in a band. We're, we're going to be recording stuff." Blah blah blah. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Like, what are you called? Sort of thing. And um, checked them out, and I was like, "Oh shit!" You're like, he's actually got something good going. And um, Kaina and um, Crowhurst played London recently, and. Conjurer put on the bill. Mm. Completely weird bills for them to be put on where it's like ambient noise, power noise, dissonance. Right. And then Conjurer, where it's kind of like almost opethy, doom, death metal. Right. With, I found out, I'm really into a band called Esoteric. Esoteric, how you? I call it Esoteric. Oh, yeah. Um, They're playing Temples, actually. Oh, I know. <laughs> I fucking love Esoteric. And Greg Chandler is a hero. He's on. He's on, in Lichgate, who did the album of the year. But yeah, besides the point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is all just like. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm just going to edit all of this out of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I love bands. We got, we got I about. Love, I love Esoteric. So far, we've got about 10 they minutes have with the had podcast. A few kind of, um, they have. Uh, they're lacking a synth player currently. The last synth player left um, for whatever reasons and. Um, you having to get a little shoe in. I saw, I saw the drummer of. Uh, oh, I wish. I wish. Um, <laughs> Send a meme. This is, this is your interview. Uh, your, uh, sorry, Greg. Your <laughs> Audio and interview. I know we're, we're friends on a. Facebook, uh, so. come on, be in your band. <laughs> no, um, yeah. I recognise the drum from Conjure. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And yeah. it turns out he's the old esoteric keyboard player. Oh, the right. last keyboard player. I was like, oh my God, you're really cool. And he's a fucking amazing drummer. Like, genuinely, one of the best drummers I've seen. Conjure, right. check him out. They're yeah. really good. And they were playing Mammoth Fest, so that's where I became aware of it. And it seems like a kind of cool thing that's going on. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because I feel like with Human Future, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, you're wrong. I feel like... Uh, the two venues that I see you guys on bills a lot is the Green Door Store and the Unicorn. The like, Unicorn you... is where every band plays because that is a really cool, cool place. Yeah, it's brilliant. I really like it. Yeah, that's good. Do you yeah. find that you you cater more to certain 
like venues or places? I don't think we have any kind of... Exactly. I was, <laughs> I was about to say, I don't think we really have that sort of appeal. I, I, I don't think enough people are aware of us necessarily. I don't know. I don't know whether we appeal to enough to people because... Mm. It, like I'm kind of used to it, and it doesn't seem that kind of weird and abstract to me. But sometimes when I've played it to people, they're like, "Fucking hell, what's going on here?" I'm like, "Is it really that kind of hard to comprehend?" And I guess for some people, it really is. It's just. Well, I saw you guys at, um, when you supported Maths at oh, yeah. the, uh, and, and that was when, like, yeah, after we actually had the kind of the switch up to six people. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. The show actually was six. Yeah, and that was like that was really good good show like a lot of people were there and stuff you yeah, know that was that was a great show yeah I enjoyed it and it was Gary on drums Gary yeah. Drum oh yeah here. that's right yeah um, we, like obviously we're kind of in flux of drummer Kurt he's yeah. currently drumming for us but obviously he's a busy boy so he's a very busy trying he's, to, he's in a couple of bands <laughs> yeah yeah so like trying to work things out with him but obviously we realize like yeah there's um, the possibility that it's just not going to work out but yeah so Gary has has he been so Kurt's been filling in for you recently yeah and he did the European tour with us and yeah. he was a character yeah he is a real <laughs> we love Kurt and oh that... he got messy the first night I didn't realise that um, smoking rules are kind of lax in certain places <laughs> in Europe and so the first night we spent was it in Antwerp it was in Antwerp and yeah. um, the club just people constantly fucking chain smoking didn't? right right and like um, Kurt had <laughs> we've been supplied <laughs> with a lot of alcohol surprisingly like bands do oh, and yeah. Kurt had made good use of that and um, then hit some like a blunt really right. fucking probably has to delete all this bit as well <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is pretty funny like basically he I have to dad him for a lot I was his parent no, for a period of like really looking after him and he's like having a sneezing fit for 10 minutes I'm like he's like, I'm all right, I'm all right. he's like you're gonna fucking fall over no no before like, that we uh, we walked back into the venue I think we were getting some food because Everyone in Europe gives you the best food. Right. right. Yeah. Walk back in and he's on the phone like, who's you on the phone to? And uh, apparently a, uh, a potential student's dad had called him up whilst he was uh, under the influence. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. And it, then afterwards he's like, I can't really hear you. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll text you. So he's write this really long message and he got everyone in the band to check it for him. Yeah! <laughs> Oh, I've written that properly. <laughs> just to make, yeah, to make sure it's not like offensive or like just going to make it worse. Or just like complete jargon yeah yeah so yeah that's that was night one yeah Got night one was good the, we're, we're it was often. brilliant because like he he had spent like after the shows had finished he, like and i'm looking after him he's like, I'm like mate stop he's still drinking i'm like stop drinking you're you're done sort of thing. and he's like no, no like, gotta, when i'm when i'm drinking i'm having a beer <laughs> <laughs> that was something that was a good one. but yeah like <laughs> He, yeah, oh basically, he was like insistent <coughs> upon. I was like, "You're gonna throw up, mate." He's like, "But I don't, I don't ever throw up." So that's when we're driving home. Mm. Fortunately, sat in by the window. Okay, oh, like, <laughs> go throw up. And all the way to where we stayed, he was puking out the window. I think he may have thrown up on someone. I think he may have thrown up into someone's car. I can't be sure. <laughs> they weren't very happy. That's what's for sure. Yeah, and uh, Torpor behind us. Yeah. But, uh, Delightfully Got to see, see uh, all of it. <laughs> see the trail. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was an... It's an interesting dynamic like, on that tour. <laughs> oh, Kurt is so funny. We love him. In Human Future, uh, two of us are straight edge. and So when you Kurt, see something like that... Kurt was not really that... Um, accustomed to... Accustomed to hanging out with people that are straight edge. Well, no, it's, also, it's, not, it's not necessarily that. It's just the, the, the band dynamic. We try and be respectful of Alex, but yeah. also we kind of like, fuck off. Like, it's... I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop you. Yeah, exactly. Like I want to make it clear, Alex isn't a prick about it, nor is Luke. Right. We we didn't talk. Let's go back to True Seeker. We didn't oh, really yes, go. We went on a massive tangent there. So yeah. so how did that come about then? Um, Alex yeah, was, is an incredibly hard worker, and he deserves it greatly. Cheers, mate. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. <laughs> um, no, basically, I was working for Holy Royal, just like packing shirts and records and stuff for about a year, and then um, we're kind of talking about how to expand Holy Royal and different kind of ideas we have with like expanding distro and so on. And Alex was like, um, why don't we set up like a, a sister label? You can run it. And uh, yeah, you can sort of run it through how you all use some of our different channels we've set up over the years. Okay. And, you know, give you a bit of a, a head start on it because I think you'd be able to, to do it. Mm. So I was like, well, if I would do it, I kind of want to have like, you know, it all be my own money rather than holding raw money and just yeah, yeah, yeah. do it all myself. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of discussed a couple of years ago. And then we recorded the Human Future album. Um, and I'd sort of said to Alex, like, you kind of interested in putting this out for Human Future on Holy Raw? And 
can't remember the conversation, but it was basically like, I can do, but how about doing this label? And I, at the time I was uh, working a job that didn't pay a huge amount, so I was a bit like, I can't really afford it. So mm. I was on the fence, talked to Steve, talked to Phil, who was supposed to be future, and we we're like, between us, kind of, we, we all have quite similar musical tastes now, so we just like, yeah, makes sense. Mm. Um between us, we'd be able to scrape the funds together to get it started. <laughs> well, and, I, I, yeah, I just remember when, like, you first kind of like had caught wind of like potential, like you could do something. You were like asking if I'd be interested to kind of like be involved in anywhere. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be involved. It's kind of cool because again, we're both passionate about music, mm. and uh, yeah, it just it kind of makes sense because we don't want to. Well, I know, I know, I don't want to. Um, spend my life doing things I just don't care about. Right. Music's what I care about. So it makes sense. Like do the things you like. Yeah. And so as so had you had any experience with running a label before that? Nope. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I, I helped out with how you're all. Yeah. Um I mean I've a lot of my friends run labels. Yeah. I mean, as an example I played in a band once which was uh we had one practice uh, it was <laughs> me on guitar uh pat hassan who runs uh carry the weight yeah was on guitar as well and darren who runs dog nights was on bass oh really and, so it was all uh, label people yeah and max uh biankowski who was in the vocalist for wayfarer was the, the vocalist right so yeah I, I knew lots of people that um that ran labels so so you could get a lot of like help and advice yeah it didn't really seem that daunting I suppose no. I was like they can do it yeah well, Why not? yeah yeah exactly um, and I worked with Alex for a while and mm. he was more than willing to give us a lot of advice on stuff yeah yeah and he did and we appreciate it mm. yeah so as far as um, your releases that you've had go through the label yeah so we, we did the Human Future one was like kind of the first up and then Steve Steve bangs on about a lot of bands as you can probably tell from this podcast so far. <laughs> and um, he was going on about this band called Sonance to me. Okay. And I was like... Their debut like ghost, ridiculous. And um, and then I, I've forgotten how it happened, but they... Well, basically, I, they released um, Black oh, they, Flower. Just they kind of released it. I'm like, right, what's happening? What's happening? Why isn't there like a physical release sort of thing? Yeah. And I, I'm on the old Twitter... Um, I try and promote bands. I try and be you know, supportive of music and blah, 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 blah. And I try and like communicate with bands. So I started kind of talking to bands and uh, like Sonance. And it was literally from a post where they're like, we're trying to get a t- tour going sort of thing. So could you kind of help us out? I think I suggested um, Martia from uh, uh, SFG, maybe, yeah. or something like that. Mm. And from that, me suggesting them, like, hey, like, kind of like your stuff. Like, you would you like to um, tour? Started talking to Ben from there, and uh, I just posed the question of, "Oh yeah, by the way, I noticed Black Flowers out. It's wicked. Mm. Well, what the hell's happening about release?" It's like, "Oh, the reasons." And I was like, "Oh, so like we're, we're starting up a label. Mm. So um, okay. please." <laughs> yeah. I feel like Sonant's <laughs> such an incredible band, but they don't know value, that they are. They don't even value it to an extent. Right, like, right. And so, like, for example, when we were at Temples, they had uh, CDs of uh, Black Flower and, and Light Ghost made up. Uh, like, really, you know, professionally made CDs from this label. And uh, so we were running the store. They're like, how much should we charge for these CDs? And, like, we're thinking three pounds. Like, Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> at least five pounds just yeah. to not have the change. Yeah, but like, just people pay a tenner. They have no right. Like, right. When I say they, they have no value of it, like, isn't like obviously they aren't. They care about their music intensely, but that's the point. They care about the music only, really, mm. and so they're just like, like yeah, just say like yeah. three quid because that's pretty much how much it pretty much how much it cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I see. You, You're you, are, you are allowed to make a profit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a crime to make a profit of sorts, or like at least like to make a slight markup so you can get your money back to an mm. extent. It's not like you're committing some cardinal sin. Like you're a prick if you're thinking <laughs> making any money is. How the, dare you? Yeah, how dare you? You're, you're being. <laughs> how dare you try to live? But mm. I think they because they um, recorded it uh, at a friend's studio, but then they mixed it, mastered it themselves. They did the artwork themselves. Mm. So they got like an amazing work ethic, but then I suppose because they don't really have to pay anyone to do it, they're just like, uh, therefore we should Yeah, but that, that's, that's the thing. It's like, I've literally, I would be like, at least make it a five. Sorry, I'm not dealing with like, I've got seven pounds. It's yeah, seven I mean, pounds. that's just like, obvious, really. No, no, it's just, it's just for your own like, 
Oh, yeah, I'm going mental was, with change. Yeah, exactly. Being weighed down. So, yeah, we put that out and we ended up... It was going to be that that was going to come out um, before the Human Future record. So it's going to be, you know, number two in the catalogue numbers was going to come out before the first one. <laughs> like, they both come out on the same day. <laughs> um, but we, we kind of Nailed it. tried to squeeze that in as quick as possible before um, Temples Fest because they're playing the main stage at Temples. And yeah, yeah. That was... It, and they were well. fantastic. They... Everyone shut their pants, I think. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, incredible. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're amazing. Mm. Um, so that was number two. And then the third thing we put out was... Um, Chubby boy over here. Yeah, Steve has got a uh, another project, which is like his outlet for his millions of power tabs. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually like nothing. None of the material has been written on power tab. This um, is post tab. Um, oh, so that's a genre. <laughs> <laughs> it probably means those black midi and shit. Yeah, like yeah. That. Oh, um, so yeah, it's, that was again. We didn't want it to sort of become like a vanity project, mm. so we've um, yeah. Well, no, no, the, 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 we're not gonna like. It's a way for us to release our music, mm. but we don't. Yeah, it's not as he said. It's not a vanity project where the label is purely for us. We actually really want to kind of. Well, it doesn't seem band. like a self-indulgent thing. It's more like, how can I release this the easiest way? Yeah. So yeah. Steve had worked on that record a, a while ago. And I, I self-released it like a year before or whatever. And I was very stubborn about it. It's like, I want to, like, if I can't get it on the, uh, I wanted to, <laughs> I, I approached Church of Fuck. Yeah. And um, uh, Profound Law. Those were the labels I wanted to put it out mm -hmm. at the time. And um, Lawrence seemed to like it, but you know, it's like, he's, it's a small label. He can't afford to do all these things. And, right. And, uh, it's a sort of thing where like, Stephen Trepak, I want to put money on that. Maybe <laughs> not, sort of thing. Like I've got other things to prioritise. Profound Law just didn't care too much, right? And um, and so I just kind of left it. And she's like, and Alex was just like, it's, it's worth a shit. Like, yeah, I want to, I want to put it out. Good. Mm. And um, and so I was like, I appreciate it. And obviously, like it's it's now got a physical release and then um, it's out there and yeah. more people have heard it now and that's what was more important to me I wanted to put some people to hear it yeah brilliant it was good mm. so yeah we, we had a lot of stuff that's been in the pipeline for ages but as you probably know from being in bands like Takes mixing mastering mm -hmm. and then artwork and all those other things taking so long that I mean one of the records that we were the first thing I did when we decided to do True Seeker I contacted a band called 52 Commercial Road that I've been a fan of for years and um, they were like, yeah, yeah, brilliant. What great timing. We've, we're recording an album um, in January. So uh, how about putting that out? That should be ready for April. Anyway, we're, they've still not had it mastered. <laughs> that was three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so of. that's going to be at least a year late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's been a couple of others that are like just mm. dragged on. So it seems like loads of stuff came out all at once and then sort of quiet. Right, but right. There's, there's but also there was, there was good reason for that because obviously the stuff with my mum. So yeah. that kind of obviously put a damper on things. Like basically personal shit going oh, yeah, on. Oh, yeah, yeah. And right. um, so obviously... We've been distracted. Had, yeah. Mm, yeah. There's been distracting things going on. Yeah, that's, that's and, fair um, enough though. So well, you've well, got rope coming up. Yeah, so that's the, the next yeah. thing which has been sent off to press now. How, when's this going to come out? Uh, well, this will come out end of January. Probably. Okay, so it will be announced then. Yeah. So yeah, we've got um, rope coming up, which is... Which is X. Good time, boys, Good time boys and the hunger artists. Okay. Um, God, I remember that. Yeah, yeah Lewis uh, sent me it like last year. And I was yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that album's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that should be out in March, I think. How, how are we going to sell it? How are we going to sell Rope? Welsh. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, very, it's incredibly Welsh. <laughs> it's very Welsh. Uh, the the album title I can't pronounce because it's in Welsh. And yeah. the, the t shirts for pre order. Right, it's pronounced Ryan Giggs or something like that. Nice. <laughs> I think uh, for someone who probably the best like the most I guess the most broadest way I could describe them is kind of like a self-defense family type of vibe yeah I, I kind of think of them as somewhere between self-defense family like vocals kind of shellac or right. a little bit like basement-ish mm -hmm. yeah um, but then I spoke to Lewis Johns about it and he's said that he thinks that they remind him of neurosis oh, really yeah so, Latin neurosis, probably. I have no idea yeah. where he's getting that from. But <laughs> I think they were. I think that's Hansen. all the hearing damage. The from power <laughs> trio that is Hanson. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's next up, which is we're really excited. And and what's actually, that? Is that an EP? That's a full length. So, oh, full length. Okay. Yeah, they recorded it in two days. They did it all live. Wow. And the drama is so good. 
He's so good. Yeah. Like just doing it live. He's got like fucking hell. Yeah. Awesome. Incredible. So really excited about that. We're doing that as a split release with um Flood. Do you know um like Flood Floor Shows from Belgium? Right. Oh um, yeah, yeah. They've got a label, so they're they're releasing um that along with us. Oh brilliant. Uh so really looking forward to that one. And then probably by this time I think we will be just getting ready to properly launch pre orders for uh Sonance and Torpor as a split. Wow. Okay. Uh, who again are fantastic as well with what is that that one it's um, um I don't know if you know Sonance and Torpor but they're slightly <laughs> heavy yeah they're a little bit heavy a little bit like smidgen on the heavy side and yeah. fucking hell it sounds brutal yeah. I, I remember watching them at, um, at the Unicorn with so, uh, both of them are one. one no just Torpor I think played that one because I discovered Torpor when I went to see um, Sonnet's Live and to kind of play like hey this is me from the yeah Lord. yeah yeah and um, yeah oh I fucking love Torpor yeah I remember watching it it was at the Unicorn I was just like who the fuck is this band I've never heard of them they sound yeah. exactly I kind of went along and thinking like it's just like never heard of them fair enough like I'm, I'm there for Sonnet's and um, I yeah. went with AJ my mate and um just again, just like saw them, I was like, Jesus Christ, okay. One yeah. of those things where again, you're not expecting anything and yeah, blown away. Yeah, I mean, we toured with them for Human Future and mm. they said that was their first ever tour. Really? And wow. they've been a band for like, four yeah, they, years they or do, something. they just play kind of significant one offs yeah. and such. Right, but right. I've, what tunes do they play in? They play like G, F, or G or something, don't they? Something like that. It's, unbelievably heavy because I know sonnets is like uh, if I'm not mistaken one of them is like kind of the, the neurosis sort of thing of um, where it's like a standard tuning but then you tune um, the lowest string to unison with the string next to it right I see so it's like G equivalent of that and then the other guy is just like standard G where it's like concert pitch but down to G right right so, so. just sounds heavy basically <laughs> yeah basically yeah. it's just like In the sound natural. of like farting strings almost like <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Um, so we've got that and then we've got a release which we're really excited about oh I've my god we can't mention it because <laughs> it's not been announced yet, but I am oh my god this is like this is a dream for me yeah um, we're releasing a band who previously were on a label that it was pretty sick that released Opeth and Emperor which is again kind of blowing my mind wow they've left that label and they said alright guys do you want us to they said, Stephen, you're incredibly handsome. Alex, you are dashing as well. We like your the cut of your jeans. Wow. So, yeah, we're looking forward to that one. Yeah. They, they sent us the record. Potentially and... their best record as well. Right. For, I'm a fan of theirs, like, mm. just before. So, And I'm just blown so, away. So but... when can you announce that then? I've got no idea. I think I it's know. kind of ready. I think it's probably just waiting on us. Like, yeah, it's um, it's being masked and stuff. And uh, look, we kind of don't want to mention it in a way because we're almost... At least I feel like it's kind of like we don't want to jinx it. Yeah, sort of thing. you want to wait until the ink's dry. Yeah, 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 until like it's actually on vinyl. Sort of yeah, thing. And yeah. We're like, oh, we can sell it now. It's Brilliant. real. Oh my god, it's <laughs> yeah, real. It's real. It's real. And, yeah, yeah. Um, all I can say is um, they're a band who deserve far more respect than they get. Mm. And okay. um, I saw them at Damnation Fest as well. And oh, yeah, we've also got other stuff lined up. We've mentioned like um, on our flyer stuff. Like, uh, yeah, uh, Earth Moves. Moves. Which okay. is um, guys no, from We Never Learn to Joe Live. Clayton, yeah. the, the, the boy wonder. Yeah, so yes, We Never Learn to Live and Sam from Grappler and uh, Cloud Boat. And um, they make Jordan on vocals. Yeah. So it's kind of like a super group of uh, <laughs> <laughs> UK Swell. UK Swell super group. Um, yeah, well, at yeah, so uh, you got that coming out as yeah. well. And then eventually that 52 commercial road records. <laughs> Finally. Which I've been sent it. It sounds amazing. They recorded it with this guy who you look through his discography of credits of things he's worked on it's like Adele it's like Adele uh, he's recorded Tom Jones he's recorded this so they're really going for the Adele Tom Jones yeah 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 I can hear him already no they're they're very kind of (laughs) it's not unusual to say (laughs) something Adele reference I can't be (laughs) I don't know Adele's there Um, so that as well so uh, 2016 should be busy hopefully Awesome. Uh, provided they all get mixed and mastered within a reasonable time. Awesome. Oh, and also, like, we can mention, like, I guess, like, because it's just about started, we're, we're working on the next Human Future EP. Right, so, right. Um, yeah. That's, that's yeah. happening. I don't know if we'll release that, though. Might, might let someone else release that. Yeah. I, thought, oh, I thought the idea was we're going to fucking digitally release it and be I like, I, I think, think you should just go back into hibernation, never play a show again. Boom. I'm for that. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Like, I've got to say like that was one of the best things. Like, the, I'm very glad Alex convinced me to like 
well, let's actually make this a band sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, it brings its own um, kind of tensions and its own problems in terms mm-hmm. of just like if you don't get out of the room, of course you're not going to see these problems because they will never, like, the things will never present themselves. Right. And so, like, I never thought I'd be touring Europe. And we've toured Europe, and that was one of the best times of my life. And mm. I, we've made friends with some incredible March here from SFG. I love you, and I love Mike from ACU because you're so kind. And I can't remember the names of the guys who cooked did, us a meal. When you went to ACU, they it was cooked you um, food, right? Sorry, they cooked you food at ACU in Utrecht. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure they cooked <laughs> what two dudes. We were like the best meal I think I've ever had. And we I, were speechless. I, I, I ended up. This going to lo- lose me street cred. Is, this, it, is it the university? Something. Is that no? no it's, it's a venue. It's a venue that's like got like a a restaurant at the front and then there's yeah, like yeah. a back room. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean now. Yeah, that Mike, was... the sound guy, was so welcoming. Yeah, Marcia was just lovely. Oh, like, she's again, always been. Jeffrey, I met him briefly, like mm. so I can't say too much, and he was very kind. And um, the guys who cooked us the meal, like one of them was an English dude, which kind of surprised me. And she's like, yeah, yeah. and uh, the other, like, oh, they were so nice, and like, I was just. It's what it's basically very we're cold. very pleased. Yeah. yeah, but I was telling you, like, why are they doing this to, for us? Why? Yeah, because again, like you know what it's like in England. It's not like um, it's just we haven't been treated terribly, but again, it's just not the same level of service. And again, it's like because it, like, money goes elsewhere, yeah, like, and you, you can't be afforded. And if mm-hmm. you get like food, nice food, it's because a band has put it on. Essentially, I went when I went on uh, on the recent tour with uh, Talk, or I said to my girlfriend before I left. It's like we're probably going to be in cold pasta, yeah. uh, sleeping in the van, or just on on the floor. Or the promoter's just gone to Asda an hour before and bought crisps. Crisps. Yeah. So I, was, I kind of went expecting that. Like I think it probably wouldn't be, but I mm. set my expectations at that. Yeah. And holy shit! Like every day, AC, the best. It food. was a gourmet meal. I'm not vegan, and it was a like pure vegan meal, yeah. but it's one of the best meals I've ever had. Yeah. Every show was amazing for food and. End up, sleeping, end up sleeping like memory foam mattresses most nights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Geeson, was it Geeson where they had the, it was like kind of the, um, the... Oh, the squat. Squat, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it had the, f- oh, the football table. So oh. basically, we're very pleased we end up playing live because we've met some amazing promoters and mm, Amazing people, bands. amazing musicians. Like Sammy from Employed to Serve, like I kind of like have a... I uh, I appreciated him from afar, and now he's well aware of how I appreciate him. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, dude likes Akakoka. He's my brother now. Have yeah, you like, seen what he looks like? Of course he likes Akakoka. Oh my like, days! Look, Akakoka was actually the, one of the biggest influences on Human Future at first, like when I was writing stuff. As you can tell, but <laughs> <laughs> by the way we dress. Yeah. Um, no, again, it's, it's, you wouldn't hear it, but like mm. again, it was a very big thing. Like so, him like an Akakoka, we like quote shit together. Yeah, constantly. yeah. And I think uh, he's probably the most liked person in our kind and of And there's good group. reason because he's, he's just seemingly incredibly like over the board kind of dedicated yeah. to it. Well, it's, it's funny you bring that up because we did that show with Employed to Serve at the ACU and uh, it was it was us Employed to Serve and some other bands. And yeah, Sam was great. You know, they treated us so well. Uh, it was our bassist Stuart's birthday and... Uh, he was the only one who got really drunk and uh, there wasn't that many I'll be honest there wasn't that many people there was probably about maybe 20 people and they did that thing where they all stand in a line at the front cross armed and I remember we were playing and uh, Stu like down a whiskey and he was like he threw it into the crowd and it kind of just fell in front of this group of people that were standing like cross armed just like (laughs) not impressed at all (laughs) I was like and then we went to this guy's house uh, to stay. It was Stu's birthday, but he was the first one who went to sleep. And like me and the rest of employed serve were just like, like dancing and partying, <laughs> and, you know, for Stu's birthday. Even though he was asleep, it was. Oh, when uh, when we played ACU afterwards, there was a disco. Oh and, really? And we were trying to get all the gear out whilst well, navigating between um, like all these sixteen-year-old kids oh, God. dancing. So, like, but then, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're standing in the. I know. Coming through! Like, you're, you're, you're in the. Look, heavy. Ch- okay, you're just going to stand there, apparently. Fucking yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, that is like my pet peeve when people won't get out of the way when you're moving. Gear. There's worse things that happen in life. So, we in had the to moment. Do a dance off with Kurt and Luke. <laughs> yes! Yeah, we went back in! Yes! It's uh, pretty seductive, I've got to say. If you were there, you would have like lost all. Oh, uh, I can only imagine. Yeah. You would have been tempted to babbery. <laughs> 
So what? So what's the uh, what's the future for Human Future? Uh, we've got an EP that yeah, we're next EP. We're next EP. Sort of slowly recording mm-hmm. at the moment. Um, we're planning to record uh, some stuff at home, some stuff with Lewis Johns. Yes. So half. I've got a Kemper profiling amp, which is like a kind of fancy dude, or like looks like a, like it should be from two thousand and one. How powers it sort of thing? Mm. But um, it's something where it allows you to record uh, guitars like really well. At, at home, sort of mm. thing, and um, so, so I've got it. If I can use it, sort of thing, and also get me to learn it a bit better. Yeah. But obviously, we realise drums. Yeah, drums. They vocals. are so important to like for certain types of music because I'm really into electronic drums and like yeah. kind of um, program drums and stuff like Blue House Nord. Like it would sound a bit weird, I think, with live drums for the most part. Right. But um, for human future, it just it's not appropriate. So mm-hmm. need to go get live drums. Vocals as well. It's probably best we do that sort of stuff. And also any overdubbing where it's like it may not work with Kemper. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And any excuse to hang out with Lewis Jones. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, we loved Lewis again. Like, yeah. Again, it was uh, felt a bit weird at first, like uh, at first, not like because Lewis made it weird, but again, it's that sort of thing of like, fuck, we're in a studio. He recorded Bastions. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. And then, as I say, the sphincter relaxes. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh fuck yeah, this he made us feel so welcome. And sure, like, I, I, I'm aware. I annoyed him. Because, <laughs> like, like, as I mentioned, like the kind of like the thing, where yeah, I was yeah. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, and um, the suggestions he came out with when we were recording again, Spectrum were incredible. Like, just the it didn't sound like how I expected it to sound, but it's not like I'm disappointed with it mm. like that. He made it sound amazing, in my opinion. And um, it's like he we kind of let him become the sixth member, sort right. of, and kind of dictate that to an extent. Obviously, if he kind of went to an extent, like. You know, you know, you want it like to have like a game guitar. I was thinking just pure flange throughout. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, fuck off. <laughs> another, yeah. Add another track. Yeah. We uh, we have the honour. Yes, I- yes, yes. We can say this. <laughs> last time we knew, uh, uh, the last time you said at least when when we recorded the album, we were the band with the most tracks that he'd ever recorded. Really? Score, fuck everyone else. We so you, you beat Rolo to Massey. Yeah. Wow. Well, or oh, maybe not. Like with grievances. Are they? Grievances they had a lot. They recorded that after us. Ah, oh, for fuck. sake. Fuck. Okay. Right. For a moment, we had. Because like, I said, I think it was like 120. Holland, he said something like Holland was like the band before him that was like mm. the most. So uh, listening to. I actually kind of came to the album quite late. I bought it on cassette from Matia and um, I, I listened to it then. Yeah. That's a yeah. good album. And also, John, just... John Desmond, all right, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Cheeky. pops up in the Road to Massey record. Jeez. Cheeky boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, I remember him saying, we were talking about the Road to Massey record, and he was like, that's, I, I don't know if he said it was one with the most tracks, but he said it was so, just even trying to load the tracks up just took like a long time on his computer. We need to so. get some more instrumentation. Yeah, so. Kurt's going mental. So, um, so the website for true for people to truthseekermusic.com it. it's okay. truthseeker music not truthseeker records okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, when we were coming up with the name it was basically like let's call it music because uh, I'll catch everyone out and we everyone's really arrogant yeah. yeah 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 sure so it's truthseekermusic.com okay uh, hueandfuture.bandcamp.com okay are you, are you guys going away for any shows or anything at the moment? We or? are we we're planning to do something for like um, Bank Holiday. We were, we were supposed to be going away with Old Skin, but I guess they're not a band anymore. Oh, right. Yeah, because we, we were discussing it beforehand because we fucking love Old Skin. Mm. Like After seeing them at the Kaina 10-year anniversary show, holy shit. Yeah. So good life. And then Don Moss messaged me saying like, yo, we want to do a tour? I'm like, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then we come back from Euro Tour. The day that we come back, they split up. And oh. then it's a, release an amazing album though, but it's still like, it's bittersweet because he's like, eh, I've been waiting for this. Shit. Yeah. That's um, a shame. So got that. Got a bunch of stuff coming out on True Seeker. Um, um, that's probably it. Wild, wait, wild, wild, one love Who, what record. band was that <laughs> well, that was another band releasing I was just trying to think of a, a, peaceful, a peaceful way to end it but I said completely inappropriate thing um, Domo Arigato okay that's a good way uh, to end it bonjour <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that was the episode for this week. I want to say thank you to Alex and Stephen from Human Future slash Truth Seeker Music. If you want to keep up to date with them and the label, go to truthseekermusic.com. That is where they keep all their updates and also where they will be announcing that new release that they were talking about at the end of the episode. So go to that website, check them out. 
Also, if you download the podcast via iTunes, a great way to support the podcast is to rate, review, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the podcast. Tell people that might be interested. Review the podcast. Say how great it is. Say how charming I am and all that mumble jumble. Um, Also, if you want to get in contact with the podcast directly via email, you can so by doing this. Start a new email, new mail, and type in podcast at holyrawrecords.com. That's podcast at holyrawrecords.com. Email us if you want to hear a new guest, if you have recommendations, all that stuff. Also, you can contact me directly via Twitter. You can so by finding the handle at Maz Gambadella. That's at M-A-Z-Z-G-A-M-B-A-R-D-E-L-L-A. That's my handle. Uh, Get in touch with me that way as well. Also, if you didn't hear in last week's episode, I've started a new SoundCloud called Nostalgia Call in which we represent some artists and releases that never got a physical copy done. Uh, stuff that's kind of been washed away in the sands of time but now you can listen to all these cool bands one of which that we're representing is the Pluto who are from Surrey and they are awesome if you like post-rock, screamo, uh, all that kind of stuff go find Nostalgia Core on SoundCloud and two of the Pluto's EPs are up there now Also, if you're a band, an artist, or a small company in the Guildford area, go check out Esoteric Screen Printing. Esoteric Screen Printing is a apparel printing service based in Surrey and Hampshire. They print posters, tote bags, t-shirts, jumpers, whatever you like. If you want to find out more information, you need some tour merch done, uh, you need some patches done, you need some bags, you need whatever, anything that printing would be needed for go to www.esotericscreenprinting.co.uk also if you heard in the last episode fall of messiah's empty colors is up for pre-order on the holy raw records website go check that out if you're interested in bands like pianos come the teeth kid crash chaos pilot loma prieta all that kind of energetic post-rock nonsense go check it out at the holyrollrecords.com website finally this is what we've all been waiting for holy raw 10 the 10th anniversary birthday yes uh there were all the videos that were put up on facebook and stuff so many people asked me about it i was like i have no fucking clue what this is about because i am not in the loop but Pink Mist and Holy Rule Records are doing a 10th anniversary birthday party at the Dome and the Boston Music Rooms in Tufnell Park, which is insane. Basically, they are having a massive party there and they're going to put on loads of cool bands. There's DJs, barbecue and vegan food trucks, stalls from loads of record labels. So they haven't announced the entire lineup yet. But at the moment, it's looking pretty good. So this is the lineup at the moment. It's Hang the Bastard, Rolo Tomasi, Departures, Slab Dragger, Apologies I Have None, Giants, The Long Haul doing a one-off reunion show, We Never Learnt to Live, Ohms, Svalbard, Meek is Murder, Employed to Serve, who are playing Greyer Than You Remember in Full, Body Hound, Upriver, who are playing Undertow in Full, one time only, Hasts, Eagled, Eulogy, Helpless. There's so many other bands that are going to be released as well. So keep your eyes out for that. If you want to get tickets for this insane event, it's 15 quid in advance and doors are one 14 plus under 16s must be accompanied by an adult. But if you want to get a ticket, you can do at the Holy Rule website and you can also get a bundle deal as well, which includes a T-shirt um and other things i believe uh there's a facebook event as well uh you can find that on facebook obviously but yeah get excited this is going to be such a cool event uh it's being supported by metal hammer and uh they've got loads of like really cool shit going on so it's saturday 21st of may 2016 keep that day free in your calendar because it's going to be great okay so saturday the 21st of may holy raw 10
All right, guys, and that's it. Thanks very much, like I said, to Alex and Stephen. Thanks to Holy Raw Records. Thanks to Alex Lee again for listening to this and listening to his own sultry voice. And we'll see you guys next time, all right? See you later. Bye. Do an EP Found first. Yeah. yeah. Do an EP first. And it was, again. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you just broke the chair. <laughs> I said this chair was thin. <laughs> <laughs>